Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, dear student, in this chapter we will be discussing the antifungal agents. So by the end of this lecture, you will be able to define the types of fungal infection, describe the classification and mechanism of action of each antifungal agents, describe the spectrum of activity of each fungal agents, its pharmacokinetics, adverse drug events, and fungal uh, antifung of these antifungal agents, and the therapeutic and clinical uses for these antifungal agents. So, to the coming to the antifungal agents, uh, we have discussed the antibiotics drug um, the drugs that were inhibiting the bacteria. Uh, fungi are different from bacteria, that's why it's very difficult to treat as compared to a bacterial infection, and that's why antibacterial drugs are not effective against uh, fungal infection because of the difference in their uh, cell wall and cell membrane. Uh, the, the, the cell wall of fungi is more complex and more uh, rigid as compared to bacteria. Peptide, bacteria has peptidoglycan layer uh, in, their, in their bacterial cell wall, while these fungi contain um, composed largely of chitin. The cell wall of these uh, fungi is composed of chitin, right, which is a uh, very thick and rigid structure as compared to the peptidoglycan. Another difference is uh, from the human cells that the cell membranes of these fungi are composed of ergosterol while human cells uh, membrane is composed of cholesterol. So that is the main difference in human and fungal cells. So the, the, the area which we will target here for these fungal cells is to uh, target this ergosterol membrane of the ergosterol component of the fungal cell membrane so it will be less effective on the human cells so drug used to treat infection by fungi um, fungi can cause mostly they are causing a topical infection but sometimes it can goes inside the body and cause systemic infection and that is the most difficult to treat as compared to the um, bacterial antibacterial uh, infection. So the the uh, the infection that is caused by the fungi is known as mycosis. Uh, fungi is a large and diverse group of microorganisms broken down into yeast and molds, molds and they have these different types of um, fungi. So we don't have to go into the details of this, but you will have to know here that uh, the infection caused by fungi is called mycosis. Uh, it can cause topical or systemic infections. Topical infection are easy to to uh, to treat, but systemic infections are very difficult to treat. Uh, they they contain they are complex organisms as compared to bacteria. That's why antibacterial drug might not be effective against these fungi. And the cell membrane is composed of ergosterol, while the human cell membrane is composed of cholesterol. So here the target will be. Uh, ergosterol and we can have drug that can uh, attack the cell wall of these uh, fungi as well. So types of infections or mycosis bacterial infections we can have superficial infections like which is causing the effect the skin here or nails like rimworts, tenia or oncomycosis these are the different kinds of are types of super, uh, superficial infections, subcutaneous uh, mycosis, it affects the muscles or connective tissues immediately below the skin. So they are subcutaneous under the skin. While we can have this systemic or invasive mycosis involved, which involve the, uh, the infection of the internal organ, organs, and that is very difficult to treat. It can go through different route of administration, and that's also called the deep mycosis. Brain, lungs, or heart, or the liver, it can it can affect all these organs. Allergic mycosis affect uh, lungs or sinuses. Patient may have chronic uh, cystic, uh, you know, okay, chronic infection like cystic fibrosis or sinusitis. So these are the types of uh, bacterial um, fungal infection. 
Now, treatment option for uh, for a fungal, fun, fungal infection. So the first step is uh, we can have drug which will target the cell membrane and for principally the ergosterol component of the cell membrane. So that will be specific for, for these fungal infection or fungal cells. We can have drug that causes the synth inhibit the synthesis of DNA. We will discuss this one by one. Cell wall inhibitors or a drug that is inhibiting the uh, cell the, the mitosis fungal mitosis that is inhibiting the reproduction or uh, multiplication. So based on this, we can classify the drugs uh, based on the site of actions and based on their chemical composition. So drug that disrupt cell fungal cell membranes, they are, they are like polyenes, azoles, or allylamines. Chemically, they are different from each other and they have different um, effects like uh, side effects or their potency and efficacy are different. So in polyenes, we have amphotericin B, nystatines. Uh, these are the most commonly used drug, uh, most effective against these fungal infections, but this also have more side effects as well. Uh, then we have azoles, amidazoles, triazoles, allylamine. We will discuss this one by one. Then we will discuss the drug that is from the cell wall, like uh, caspofungine is one of them, a uh, drug that inhibit the DNA synthesis inhibitor like flocytosines, and drug that inhibit the mitosis of the fungal cell, and that contains grisofilwin. The first drug in this category uh, is the amphotericin B. Uh, amphotericin B is the drug of choice for the treatment of uh, subcutaneous and systemic mycosis. It is the most toxic antifungal drugs. Uh, the most common or the uh, most common toxicity associated with this uh, drug is the nephrotoxicity. So it has uh, it can cause nephrotoxicity, but it can be used in the treatment of life-threatening systemic mycosis because it's very effective uh, antifungal drugs. Uh, it can kill the bacteria, uh, can kill the fungi at high concentration. That means it is fungicide at high concentration and it can stop the reproduction of fungi at low concentration. That means it is fungistatic at low concentration. The mechanism, if you can see, it's uh, one of the class that is disrupting the cell membrane synthesis. So what you do with it, when it binds to the cell membranes of the fungal cells, it forms pores in the cell membranes. So through that pores, the bacteria, the components of the bacterial cell go out of the cells like potassium and other molecules, other small molecules go out of the cells and that can lead to the lysis of the bacteria of the, of the fungal cell. Pharmacokinetics, it is insoluble in water and poorly absorbed from the GIT. That's why it can be given for systemic infection. It can be given uh, intravenously or for a meningitis, uh, it can be given intrathickly. So it can be directly inserted into the um, that uh, cerebrospinal fluid or into the um, vertebral column. So minimal penetration into the CNS, vitreous hemor, and uh, amniotic fluid. So it has less volume of distributions. For topical infections, it can be used for topically. Um, it is poorly absorbed. This cannot cross the blood-brain barrier. Highly protein bound, right? So it's highly protein bound. So most of the drug remains uh, in the inactive form. And slowly and gradually it is degrading or unbounding from the protein. For fungal meningitis, it can be used intrathickly given in immune compromised patients for fungal infection, especially for, for those patients immune compromised, like uh, mostly HIV patients. Uh, so they can these, these big fungal infections can be fatal from them for them. So that's why these drugs are given for those patients who have. Who have uh, who are immune compromised? 
broad spectrum antifungal activity it is uh, has a broad spectrum antifungal actions useful for the candida that causes the oral vaginal or uh, cutaneous different types of candida uh, infections caused by these bacteria sorry fungi uh, cryptococcal meningitis histoplasma aspergillosis these are the different types of infections caused by the uh, fungi so it can be it's a broad spectrum so it can be used for a treatment of the different types of fungal infection adverse effects uh, acute reaction uh, occurs with each infusion so that's why it has to be given slowly and gradually through uh, as an intravenous infusion uh, and that can lead to nausea vomiting pain and fever so in order to control the pain and fever corticosteroids are administered along with the dress drug in order to decrease these vomiting pain and fever bone marrow suppression bone marrow suppression is one of the uh, cause or the adverse effects that's why it can produce this reversible anemia because in bone marrow all these blood cells are formed so if you as uh, so the bone marrow is depressed then it will lead to decrease in the red blood cells and will lead to anemia but it is reversible when you stop the medication that can this condition can be reversed renal toxicity is the most common and uh, most common side effects of these drugs so that's why different formulations of these amphotericin b has been designed in order to decrease this nephrotoxicity because it's the most uh, nephrotoxic drug among these uh, antifungal drugs or even antibiotics drugs so if you look into the drug interactions amphotericin b has a synergistic action with flocytosin and flocytosin is also an antifungal drug we are going to discuss it in the coming slides uh, in its function is to inhibit the dna or rna synthesis of the uh, fungal cells so it this for this drug to be effective it has to go inside the bacterial or inside the fungal cell and amphotericin b makes pores in the cell membrane so it is making uh, this drug well then easily or it, the, this drug can easily enter the cell the fungal cells and can have its action we will discuss in details in the uh, coming slide as well rifampicins and monocyclines uh, this is the anti tubercular drug monocyclines is um, antibiotic drug both potentiate uh, amphotericin B so in combination uh, these antibiotics drug can also have antifungal actions along with amphotericin B because amphotericin B uh, make the pores in the cell membrane and then these drug can easily enter the fungal cell membrane and can also have antifungal action vancomycins and aminoglycosides uh, both increases the risk of nephrotoxicity. So these antibiotics drug, they, they are also nephrotoxic. So should not be used along with this amphotericin B because it will increase the risk of nephrotoxicity. So as we have discussed, in order to decrease the nephrotoxicity, different formulations of these amphotericin B has been designed in order to decrease the nephrotoxicity. So different products, these are uh, amphotericin B lipid complex, amphotericin B colloidal dispersions, uh, liposomal amphotericin B. Uh, if we compare the effect of this liposomal amphotericin B with the normal amphotericin B, you will see that uh, liposomal amphotericin B has more clinical action, like it is it's if a KC is more as compared to the normal amphotericin b and if you look into the the side effects the infusion related side effects like nausea vomiting fever that is significantly decreased with this liposomal amphotericin b and also the nephrotoxicity so these newer formulation are designed to have a decreased nephrotoxicity or side effects Amphotericin fungisomes, amphotericin B dehydrase 4. This is also these are the newer or the uh, other formulations of amphotericin B in order to decrease the nephrotoxicity and other side effects related with amphotericin B. Nystatin is the second class in this drug. 
uh, it's similar to amphotericin B, but it's more toxic than amphotericin B. So it has more side effects as compared to nestatins. That's why it is only used for superficial candidiasis like skin, mouth, or vaginal candidiasis, uh, and available as tablet and ointment uh, also, or as vaginal suppository. So it can be used for for these uh, topical infections, but cannot be given uh, use for systemic infection because of its side effects. Uh, the next class in this uh, cell membrane inhibitor, fungal cell membra membrane inhibitor, are the azoles. Uh, it can be uh, abetazoles or triazoles. So we will discuss this and then we will discuss allylamine. So azole derivatives, these are the synthetic fungistatic agent with broad spectrum of activity. So they are uh, synthetic fungistatic and they are composed of two groups, amidazoles and triazoles. I mean, they are structurally different from each other and based on the structure activity relationship, they are different in their selectivity and side effects as well. So they lack, lack selectivity towards the uh, fungal cells. They can also affect the uh, membrane synthesis or metabolic disturbances in the human cells or the humans as well. That's why it lacks selectivity towards the fungal cells and that leading to uh, endocrine disturbances in the humans as well. While uh, these triazoles, they are more selective towards the fungal cells and that's why it leads to less side effects or less endocrine disturbances in the humans. Uh, they can alter the RNA or DNA metabolisms, uh, the example is ketokinosols. While it is resistant to degradation by the uh, gastric enzymes, that's why these drugs can be given systemically while imidazole can mostly be given and for topical infection only because they can be degraded, degraded by the gastric enzymes. The first generation is the fluconazole, the second generation the variconazole. These are the examples of these first generation and second generation triazole group. So amidazole and triazoles. Amidazoles mostly they are used topically because they are degraded by the gastric enzyme. The only amidazoles that can, that can be used for systemic administration is ketoconazoles. All others are used for topical uh, infection. Clotrimazole, iconazoles, myconazoles, all these are uh, used for topical infections. Triazoles, fluconazoles, these are, remember that among amidazoles only ketoconazole is systemic all the three others are typical uh, topical while triazoles are used systemically so they are resistant to degradations that's why they can be used systemically and largely replacing the ketoconazole so this ketoconazole is also uh, replaced by this triazole now coming to the mechanism of actions of uh, these azoles, like the common mechanism is the, uh, is the inhibition of this ergosterol. So most of these drugs, they are inhibiting certain step in the formation of their, this ergosterol. This ergosterol is, is, is a long chain which needs, which ultimately form this uh, ergosterol. And different target and different drugs targeted different steps which we will discuss later on in the production of this ergosterol which is the main component of fungal cell membrane so like for azoles we will discuss that azoles is inhibiting the conversion of lanosterol to to this ergosterol so this is the step which is uh, inhibited by the azole group and for this step the for lanosterol to convert to this ferrosterol uh, this enzyme that is called 4-alpha-demethylase is responsible. So if we stop this, uh, this enzyme, what will happen? We are breaking the chain here. And breaking this chain here means we are inhibiting the production of ergosterol, which is the main component of fungal cell membrane. So azole spine to the lanosterol 14-alpha-demethylase inhibiting the production of ergosterol. We will discuss the later uh, that uh, allyl amines that are inhibiting this step conversion of squalene to lanosterol 
or squalene epoxide. So we are here we have squalene epoxide exam enzymes and that that is inhibited by this allyl amines. So if you look into the cross reactivity of these azole group, uh, some cross reactivity is seen with the human or mammalian cytochrome P450 enzymes. So what will happen here? Remember the cytochrome P450, uh, it's an enzyme group that is involved in the metabolism of different drugs within the liver. So if we inhibit these enzymes, it can lead to decrease in the metabolism of certain drugs and that can cause is the increased bioavailability of certain drugs because it will decrease the metabolisms and that will lead to decrease increase in the bioavailability in addition uh, some of the enzyme of the cytochrome p450 family are also uh, help in the formation of steroids in the body so it leads to the impairment of the normal steroid formation glucocorticoids or mineral corticoids within the within the body the natural so that 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 can also lead to decrease uh, in the production of sex hormones in the male and females and lead to that sexual dysfunctions or uh, sexual abnormalities within male and females So ketoconazole uh, spectrum yeast hand mold it can be used for yeast hand molds poor absorption limits its role for the severe infections generally used in mucosal infection only so this is one of the drugs that can be used for mucosal infection only uh, for mechokinetics it requires acidic ph for dissolutions and systemic absorption so acid drug, drug it needs to uh, have an acid drug so those drug which decreases the acidity of the of the uh, stomach that will reduce its absorption like anti-acid we will discuss that in the anti-ulcer drugs so that will decrease its absorption uh, it's highly protein bound drug uh, hepatic uh, the the bile it can be uh, secreted through bile or the kidney uh, kidney root so hepatotoxicity very mild in around two to eight percent of the peoples it can lead to hepatotoxicity and dose related inhibition of cytochrome p450 responsible for the testosterone synthesis leading to inhibition of testosterone formation so that what we were discussing is the some of the enzymes that are responsible for the formation of testosterone in the in the males that can also be inhibited so that would lead to gynecomastia oligospermia or decreased libido so abnormal breast formations in the male oligospermia decreased production of sperms or decreased sexual desires that can have it can have these uh, genetic or uh, these uh, sexual problems in the in the males So if you look into the drug interactions, uh, uh, amphotericin, a potent inhibitors of cytochrome P4, rifampicins uh, is a potent inhibitor of cytochrome P453 A4, which is responsible for the metabolism of uh, ketoconazole. Right, so if we are taking rifampicins, rifampicins will increase the metabolism of ketoconazoles and will decrease its bioavailability. While this ketoconazoles can increase the uh, metabolism of warfarin, corticosteroids, and theophylline levels. So, although phenotoin can also come in this, it can be by mistakes that phenotoin is uh, also the concentration of phenotoin is also increased by the ketoconazoles. So, ketoconazoles inhibit the metabolism of warfarins, phenotoin. Corti, uh, corticosteroids and theophylines and that will lead to decrease uh, that will lead to increased level or bioavailability of these drugs and that could lead to toxicity because these phenotoins warfarins uh, these and theophylines these are uh, drugs with low therapeutic index so if we increases their uh, bioavailability slight uh, and a slight increase in the bioavailability of these drugs can lead to uh, toxicities. 
Drugs that increases gastric pH will decrease the blood level of ketokinazoles. So as we have discussed, it needs acidic pH for absorption. So those drugs which decreases the acidity of the gastric pH, that will be uh, that will decrease the absorption of ketokinazole. Uh, fluconazole it's a water soluble having a wider range of activity than uh, ketoconazole it has good activity against candida albicans and cryptococcus new forms uh, different types of fungal infections and the good thing about this it is available both as intravenous and oral drug and it is very highly bioavailable its bioavailability is more than 90% uh, its protein binding is also binding is also less than 12% and more than 90% is excreted unchanged uh, through the kidney because it's also water soluble so it doesn't need more metabolism. So mostly we need metabolism for lipid soluble drugs in order to to decrease its uh, reabsorption by the kidney. Allylamines uh, is the next class in this uh, this category of which are inhibiting the uh, which are inhibiting the cell membrane. So their mechanisms that we have discussed allylamines allylamine here inhibit the conversion of squalene to lanosterol. So there we have enzymes that is called squalene monooxidase enzyme which convert the squalene to lanosterol. So with the decrease in the lanosterol production, ergosterol production is also diminished, affecting fungal cell membrane, synth uh, membrane synthesis and function. So if we stop this enzyme and inhibit the conversion of squalene to lanosterol, we are inhibiting the chain in the production of ergosterol. So that will lead to the uh, inhibition of fungal cell membrane synthesis and function. The drug is considered as fungicidal, so it can kill this fungal cell. A therapeutic uses uh, nifty, niftyphene uh, hydroxide is available as topical use only in the treatment of cutaneous dermatophyte or candida infection. Terbinafine hydrochloride or lomicil, this is, is available for topical and systemic use. So this this uh, terbinafine, it is available both as topical and systemic uh, for systemic use in the treatment of dermatophytes of scale and nail infection. It is most commonly used in the treatment of oncomycosis. In the oral form of this terbinafine is generally well tolerated but occasionally cause gastric distress or liver enzyme elevation. So if it enhances or increases the elevation of the liver enzymes, it will lead to increase the metabolism of other drugs. Now the other drugs we will discuss these all these three or four types belong to the uh, cell membrane synthesis inhibitor now we will discuss this uh, dna synthesis inhibitor cell wall synthesis inhibitor and mitosis inhibitor now the another drug is the flow cytosines uh, this is a narrow spectrum uh, and it can be used for streptococcal meningitis with combination of amphotericin B. If you recall from amphotericin B, we have discussed that amphotericin B has a synergistic action with flow cytosine. So, when uh, what basically amphotericin B, it opens the cell membrane for this drug, and this drug has to get into the cells to inhibit the production of DNA. So this drug needs to go inside the cell in order to inhibit the DNA synthesis. Now amphotericin B is making it easy for this drug to make inside because amphotericin B will make pores in the cell membrane of the, back of the uh, fungal cell. So this will allow lower doses of the both drug, both of the drug because we have seen amphotericin B is nephrotoxic. So we will be taking less amount of drug of amphotericin B and also flocytosines. Amphotericin B increases cell permeability for more penetration of flocytosine. So it is increasing the permeability for this drug to go inside the cells and produce its action.
mechanism uh, flow cytosine is converted to anti-metabolites 5 uracils fluorouracils and 5 fluorouracils interfere with the fungal dna synthesis by inhibiting thymidylate synthase so no synthesis of thymidylic acids which is an an essential component of dna so basically we are inhibiting the formation of dna's uh, in the in the bacterial in the fungal cell sorry pharmacokinetics is highly orally oral bioavailability widely distributed into the cerebrospinal fluid so it can go into the cns or cerebrospinal fluid and it is very highly bioavailable adverse effects or skin rashes iffy gastric distress uh, diarrhea and reversible liver enzyme elevation can occur bone marrow uh, bone marrow toxicity can lead to leukopenia and thrombocytopenia that is common because these drug these cells are normally formed within the bone marrow uh, grisofulvin uh, this is the drug that inhibiting the uh, mitosis within the within the fungal cells so they are effective against most superficial dermatophytes but not against candida causing deep mycosis normally they are used for these superficial dermatophytes mechanisms inhibit the fungal uh, mitosis leading to failure of daughter nuclei to fall apart so they were inhibiting the uh, mitosis formation the mitosis grisofulvin uh, Pharmacokinetics given orally and fed improved its absorption. Duration of treatment depends upon the uh, tissue's turnover. It can lead. Uh, it can be from three to six weeks for skin and hair infection, and for three to six months for nail infections. Treatment should continue until the whole infected tissues are shed off. The side effects include mostly GIT related like GIT offset, hepatotoxicity. It can also lead to photosensitivity and allergy. So we have discussed this uh, flow cytosines, grisofulvin and caspofungin. We will discuss this cell wall synthesis inhibitor now. Uh, caspofungin and mycofungins are these are the first representative of the new classes of antifungal agents that inhibit the synthesis of beta 13 d glucan a cell wall component of the filamentous fungi so it is one of the component of the uh, cell wall of the fungi uh, and this drug can decreases or inhibit the production of cell wall Therapeutic uses they are approved for the treatment of invasive and uh, aspergillosis and candida in patients not responding to other antifungal drugs. They are the second line therapy for patients who are who cannot tolerate to amphotericin B or azoles. Both of them are not active orally. So they both of these caspofungin and mycofungins they are not active orally and they are the second class of drugs. Uh, they have fever adverse effects fever nausea and race because of histamine release so it can have these hypersensitivity reactions so this is all about the antifungal drugs we have discussed different classes of antifungal drugs which include most commonly the cell membrane synthesis inhibitor and they include the amphotericin b and nystatin um, the azole group triazoles and amidazoles and the terbinafines so they are inhibiting the different steps in the formation of this ergosterol, which is the main component of fungal cell membranes. And along with that, we have discussed the uh, drugs that were inhibiting the mitosis or the DNA synthesis or the cell wall synthesis of the, fun of the fungal, uh, fungal cell. So that's about art and that's all about the antifungal drugs. Thank you.